Okay. Um, so, Offer, you know, everybody knows that Offer is the Pope of the stemless into the humerus, so I don't want to fight with you, Offer. I will propose the long stem into the glenoid. <laughs> so, um, uh, I have a conflict of interest with his communication because I am an arrow designer of a prosthesis. So, um, it's very demanding to make a glenoid, and uh, everybody, uh, you know, with the view is very bad. And you have to imagine in a three dimension the, the bone. It's exactly like uh, this pilot. Uh, and you, you see just, just the piece, but uh, you don't see what there is just behind. And uh, so this, uh, a normal glenoid is a challenge, but uh, what about uh, an, a glenoid needing reconstruction? We can have posterior defect, as you know, scapular notching, medialization. Uh, we can have glenoid loosening, we can have glenoid fracture. and. Honestly, this is really, really demanding. So, in fact, the literature is very rare in glenoid reconstruction, and especially in the long peg. And uh, Tom Norris, in 2007, I think, was the first to, to imagine a long peg to make a glenoid reconstruction, as you can see, with a cylinder, a big, and a flat bass plate. So, a challenge in glenoid is frequent, and uh, uh, you can have a uh, classification of Gilouage would be one, B2, C. You can have a, a scapular notching, you can have medialization. Uh, how often this situation occurs? The, the B2 and C glenoid is about outpatient out of three. But there are other uh, problems. You can have problems with a vertical plan, and you know probably this classification of Peter Habermeyer with uh, an erosion of the glenoid at the distal part of the glenoid. So probably we underestimate that before the surgery, and of course we have to, to control by CT scan. Uh, we, we can have a proximal, of course, superior escape, and uh, in that situation, uh, you have the classification of François Sirvo and Luc Favre, which show that you can have in a, the superior escape a medialization of the superior part of the humerus and be away with the type E3 of uh, Sirvo and Favre, because you can put a superior tilt into, uh, onto your implant, and you know that we, we know now we have to make an inferior tilt to have a better compressive force. Um, more than 40% of the glenoid are like this. Uh, look at this example. There is a medialization with uh, each one glenoid, and there is an acromion fracture. So it is really, really demanding. And we have to be uh, uh, ready uh, before uh, imagine such a surgery. So now the question is, why must a glenoid bone loss be corrected? Of course, we have to prevent the prosthetist instability. We have to prevent the early loosening to maximize the range of motion, as we just see, seen, to prevent the poly wear, and to avoid anterior scapular notching in case of reverse shoulder to plasty. So, uh, a point is very important, uh, just uh, we discussed uh, previously, uh, wh what is the deltoid wrap angle? And the more lateral you put your center of rotation, the, the more important will be the tension onto the deltoid. And this will create a compressive force and will stabilize the shoulder. So you have different type of reverse shoulder prosthesis and you have to understand exactly what you do uh, to to, to recreate this completion force. But it's clear, the medialization uh, creates some instability and the lateralization creates more stability. So now, how to manage this, uh, to deal with this challenging glenoid? You have to correct, uh, the, of course, the horizontal plan, the vertical plan, and you have to be in the articular line with a lateral set and a good balance of the muscles. So we have different options, and everybody knows these options proposed in the literature. But I think uh, this could be nice. You have to be careful with the other options, because uh, uh, you look at uh, this situation. If you make a mistake, uh, you will have uh, an, anterior, an anterior wall fracture, and of course, a loosening and a great problem. So, so we have a limit uh, when you want to ream. What is the limit if you want to correct 10 degrees, you have to rim one centimeter. So if you want to correct 20 degrees, you have to rim two centimeters. That is too, very, too important. So we have to graft and we have to make a reconstruction. There is no discussion. You have to compensate. You must compensate. 
So how to compensate now? Of course, we can use bone graft, and we're going to discuss about this problem, continuous graft, cortical graft, artificial graft, but uh, you have to know that over some company propose compensated to augmented base plates uh, like this. So what is the bio RSA, the bony increase offset? So I'm not a specialist and I have to read because as you can see, I am an arrow designer and I do not use this technique in routine. I, can, I cannot give you tips and tricks. But uh, the idea is just amazing. Uh, it was introduced by Pascal Boileau and Lionel Neto in this publication in 2007. They just graft the bone um, between the base plate and the glenoid for the medialized glenoid just to lateralize and to make a, a glenoid reconstruction. And with time, as you can see, uh, Pascal imagined a very specific instrumentation to make an angled bio uh, RSA to, to make reconstruction either in the vertical plan, either in the horizontal plan. And now uh, you have uh, the patient specific instrumentation and you have uh, computers and a software to, to analyze before the surgery what you can do, what you can make, and uh, the system is just great and amazing. But the design maybe is a little debatable and this is my point of view and uh, what, what, what is the problem. Uh, the, the, the long peg is a good idea, but maybe uh, in that situation, uh, the peg is too small or too big. Uh, you, you have a, maybe a risk of cortical impeachment. Um, the, 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 fat, the, the back of the metal back is flat and I'm not sure the flat uh, metal back is the best one because you have a high risk of rocking chair effect. And this system is not compatible with a platform system, for example. So uh, what we did we imagine since 2003? And we imagined something totally different before the bio RSA. It was a very long peg and a very thin peg. So it's totally different. And look at the, the, the picture, the, the long peg, penetrates the, uh, native, the native cortical uh, because we are looking for like a kill of a boat, uh, uh, some uh, force uh, to, to contra-force uh, and to stabilize. In fact, the only good bone uh, situation uh, in uh, the glenoid reconstruction is the native glenoid and the cortical and the cortex because there is no continuous bone and there is no bone at all. So we imagine this and this is our idea to penetrate, uh, to put in fact the tip of this uh, implant through the bone with a long keel, a winglet and a long and thin, thin means six millimeters. And then uh, the system we, you can graft, as you can see, and uh, don't forget if you have to graft, you can take the quarry process because it's very easy to take it and it is vascularized, so you can, you can make uh, many, many reconstruction with uh, this system. So again, uh, this is a convex back system and you can have uh, an anterior posterior screw to fix the graft if you want. And uh, we made a uh, biomechanics study uh, to show that this long peg uh, is more stable than a flat back system with a shorter peg. So this system is compatible with a platform system. So you can make a reconstruction with an anatomic one and after the integration of your graft, uh, you can switch the ball and the socket and uh, in, in case of uh, curve tear, uh, any problem. And uh, this, is, this is for us uh, very uh, important uh, to, to prevent any erosion. This is the cadaver lab. You can see uh, uh, the posterior defect and you can see the very regular implant. So there is no long peg. You see how is the, the fixation, the, the primary fixation is not very good. So you, you, you use a long drill, uh, six millimeters, then you use this long peg and just with the impaction, without any screws, it is stable enough. So you can put the posterior graft just behind and you can hope for a good integration. So this is a, a bio RSA like, I can say, because it's not a bio RSA, but the, the idea is the same. You, you take the, the head, uh, like Pascal, you take the head of your, of your humerus, you penetrate the head, and then uh, with your, your kill, and then you can penetrate, you can see the CT scan, the, the, the peg is long enough to penetrate the, the medial cortex, and you can have a, a minimum of, 
uh, two centimeters of bone uh, everywhere where you want and you have to make it with your hand. Of course, there is no, right now, a specific instrumentation uh, because the instrumentation of the bioassay is just amazing. But you can use everywhere in the world because uh, it's very easy. So this is another example. I think um, it was the, the example I showed you just previously. In fact, when I made this revision, uh, I was surprised because for, mo for me it was a, a mechanical problem and wh when I was inside, I've discovered some infections. So I decided not to, to graft, but I just put this long peg implant. You can see there is no posterior graft behind and uh, I think, uh, sorry, is it a movie? Yes. So the patient, uh, six months later, uh, um, was very fine and without any graft and so there, there was an integration of, uh, so the system, uh, the, the, maybe you can graft but in case of infection, I am like offer, I'm afraid to make a graft in case, in case of infection. Um, okay. So in conclusion, uh, many, many glenoids, uh, glenoid needs re reconstruction and uh, the bioresa or an equivalent of a bioresa uh, is really a good option. So do not forget that you have to correct both horizontal and vertical plan if possible with a bone graft. I think you have to use a special design implant and for us it's a long peg, but the, the bioresa has a long peg, but for us the, this peg is too small and too big. And, uh, and the lateralization uh, is very important. I, I, would last, I would say it's mandatory to have a stable prosthesis. If your reverse shoulder prosthesis is unstable, maybe it's because you did not correct enough. Uh, you did not correct the medialization enough. And of course, this increases the rotation by uh, retentioning the anterior and posterior part of the deltoid. So <clears throat> I think we can push the limit of the uh, reconstruction, of course, but um, we need uh, specific design, we have to progress a lot and you, have a gr you need a great experience, but be careful because even with a very nice device, uh, you can go to the crash and uh, this surgery will uh, give uh, some modesty because we have a lot of problems too. So thank you very much. Thank you, Jean.